Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to design chill water pipe in practice. For chill water piping sizing, right, a uh, career actually have a manual on piping design, and this is one of the pages that are extracted from the book. This is the chart tree, the friction loss for closed piping system. As we all know, a uh, chill water pipe is a closed piping system, so this chart can be used for chill water pipe. For condenser water pipe, the next page of this actually is a open piping, right? And this is for a metal pipe, uh, schedule 40 for metal pipes. And this chart is actually one of the methods we can use to uh, size chill water pipe. So from this chart, right, you can see actually on the both side actually is flow, right? In GPM, this one is in uh, imperial unit. So all this is in uh, GPM, you can see closely, all is in GPM. And uh, on the bottom here, here is the friction loss. Here is the design criteria that we need to set, lah, right? Friction loss, how, how much water resistance present in the chill water pipe. Then here, this diagonal is velocity, all right? We cannot uh, let this water to flow too fast. Right. So this is something that we need to set later. Okay, another diagonal line here actually is the pipe size. You can see all the inches here is actually pipe size in a diameter. So to start, right, actually we need to fix the first thing is uh, the friction loss. We want to fix the friction loss first. Alright. Actually, uh, usually in the in this uh, carrier manual, right, they actually stated that uh, there is a balance between pipe first cost and also operating cost because pipe and pump head actually is a there is a relationship right so the smaller the pipe you use the stronger the pump you need to push through because small pipe we have a lot of resistance right so a lot of water want to squeeze through a small pipe so you need a lot of pump power so this this come to a question between uh, whether you are uh, you care about first cost or you care about operating cost. If you care about first cost, you want to reduce first cost. Of course, you use a uh, small, small pipe, right? Then the resistance will become higher. During operation, the pump will need more power to push through. Then the operating cost increase, right? If you reduce first cost, you increase the operating cost. Uh, vice versa, if you use bigger pipe, then your first cost will be higher. But then your pipe will be like, have less resistance. So your pump power will will not need so much power so the operate, operating cost uh, is reduced so between these two it depends on you know uh, what is your design intention how are you going to apply this whether you are you are you want cheaper project or you want uh, if you are the client side right if you are operating the building yourself of course budget is one thing first cost is one thing but operating cost maybe is something that you care more for example if you are operating hotel you want profit right of course the operating cost must be low then you have positive cash flow and also being financial strong something like that uh, so that need to take into consideration right so as a design engineer we need to see what is the project application what is the intention behind but in general a good balance is uh, we try not to exceed uh, this uh, friction loss right we try not to exit 10 you see carrier also uh, recommended a balance between is not more than 10 all right i'm i'm as a contractor because i i, I work as a contractor project engineer we usually size around eight right we limit the friction loss at eight feet of water per 100 feet right sometimes people go down as low as four feet Right, you go four feet, maybe your initial cost will be higher, right? It depends on your also your energy code. Uh, some more developed country they require a stricter uh, energy requirement, right? More efficient, right? When you go more efficient, that means you need a a bigger pipe. When you reduce this friction loss, that means you are using a bigger pipe. Later, when we size, you see the relationship, right? So first thing, let's fix the friction loss at uh, let's say follow my way is uh, 8 right I will fix at 8 I just draw a line we're using a very manual way here of course there are like uh, software out there you can use but 
you know most of the software either is very hard to use or very difficult to download or you need to pay something like that okay so we just use this one right you see eight feet okay i already fixed eight feet so the second criteria is the water velocity so this diagonal line right feet per second so this is related to the lifespan of the pipe all right and um, there's some performance uh, relationship also something something like uh, when you are using the header then you need a lower uh, water velocity right so that you want to balance the water okay apart from that usually this uh, feet per second we also limit at about 10 okay so there is a table i just bring it up on the screen uh carrier recommend the relationship between operating hour and also the water velocity so it depends on what is your design lifespan of the piping system right so a good balance usually like for for me i will use 10 right 10 feet per second to size the pipe right so the second step we want to limit okay we draw a line also at this 10 Can't see, am I? So, like that, you can see the line here. Okay, so what we want to design is something below this. We don't want to exit this section, right? We want to everything below. Okay, let's say for example we have a two hundred gpm, right? Okay, now we size for two hundred gpm. Two hundred gpm. So you go to the flow here. Here is the flow. Okay, two hundred gpm. Okay, we pull this line. Pull. Okay, you see. So we now we want to try to match the diagonal. Okay, which one? When we choose, uh, the intersection point does not cross this red line that we set. Okay, maybe this one. Okay, let's say if you use three inch pipe. You see, if you use three inch pipe, actually, three inch here. And this line actually is somewhere here. You see, just nice, right? Maybe it's like zero, like you know. 8.5 or something like that but it's okay but it's, it's somewhere here so we can use 3 inch uh, we can use 3 inch okay if for example if you want to like use small pipe right maybe use 2 inch oh it's a bit crazy if you use 2 inch uh, this thing will go up here and this you can see this line extend here until here you point you, you hit here the intersection here here is how much you can see here wow 60 wow this one crazy you cannot right so it's too much so it depends if you you see if you pull this nearer right you're actually using the bigger pipe size for example okay let's say if our this red line is actually at somewhere somewhere here lah. it's actually somewhere here right actually you can see you you can't actually use three inch pipe right if your red line is here let me just put a mark here okay if your red line is here right you use a, a a lower friction loss like you want the thing to be smoother right then your pipe size will be increased okay for the same 200 gpm now maybe you have to use like 3.5 inch or even 4 inch right to fulfill to fulfill the design criteria that you set so if you see here if you've done this a few times you can see yeah somewhere around 400 gpm is the transition point where this um, velocity becomes the primary factor. You can see the from here, 400 onwards, you will hit the velocity first. For example, okay, 1000 GPM. Okay, let's set for 1000 GPM. Let's size for 1000 GPM. Here, 1000 GPM. Okay, we just draw a simple line. 1000 GPM. Okay, so you can see you will hit the velocity uh, limitation before you hit the friction loss uh, so this one must be very careful because usually we size a lot small pipe we size a lot right into the ASU into the FCU we size a lot small pipe so we always use if we if we if we sometimes we forget about this velocity uh, so when you size for a big pipe you must remember okay this thing come already uh, then you have to use this one if you use this one maybe use six inch six inch is somewhere here you see six inch somewhere here okay also la, not 
not too bad, alright? Because you see, when you go to a very big pipe size, right, one jump, uh, the cost will be increased a lot, by a lot. During small pipe, it's okay, right? You jump from one side to one side, maybe you know, 5%, 10% increase in piping cost. Suddenly, this one, maybe it could double, you know, uh, because all of the handling costs. Your know, big pipe is very hard to move around, especially for the contractor, for the installer. Maybe you need to use tower crane. Uh, there's a lot of heavy manpower work. And then the perimeter increase, then your insulation cost will increase. Uh, all those things, right? And the weight also. The support hanger, everything must like double up. So the cost will increase not just on the pipe, pipe itself, but the associated thing, sorry. Uh, so if like that, then if you think uh, it's okay, then you can use this one, no problem. And also this, this limitation actually is not a, how to say, it's not a fixed thing, sorry. Because you see, velocity, this friction loss actually is per 100 feet. If your pipe is just a, a, a very short section, you can actually allow it to, to have a greater friction loss. Uh, because in the end, the total friction loss, this one is another topic we need to calculate for the pump head. Uh, because in total, then maybe you use higher one, you still can uh, use a manageable pump head to achieve the flow rate that you want. Because your pipe is short, then you can allow a greater uh, friction loss. Uh, but velocity is sort of like, fixed things right you can't you can't uh, reduce too much velocity or something like that uh, the one is roughly the same relationship between velocity and uh, lifespan so that's about it that's you how you calculate this uh, pipe size for chill water and if you want to download this friction loss chart and learn more about chill water system and chill water pipe sizing in general right just go to my blog i'll link it below this video Thank you.